See? There we go. <laughs> Okay, chapter 8, verse 8. How can you say we are wise as the Torah of the Lord is with us? Surely the pen wrought in vain, in vain the scribes. Yeah, that's a very different reading from the one that we went through last time, didn't we? Yes, but this is, the, this is much more literal translation <coughs> And then he says. laments and he tears his clothes off. And he laments and he tears, he tears his clothes off because of false prophets. You know, but he, because of because we thought we had the Torah, but we didn't have that. We law, we didn't abide by the law because the law was changed. Do you do you honestly think that if the prophet Jeremiah had thought that the Torah had been changed and that we no longer knew what it was, that he would have that, that he wouldn't have just t gone and told us, oh, and this is what you need to know? No, no. I look, I I think that if if scrolls are found in the temple, and those are different from what was perceived to be the Torah and he laments and he tears his clothes off what that indicates is that part, the Torah, part of the Torah was certainly lost or that there were changes now we do know that for example the, 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 uh, the Torah as it was revealed preservation of the Torah was oral, it was not written down initially That's fine. right? and how many years after was it written down? Where, which part? The written Torah or the oral Torah? The, the, the written Torah. The written Torah was written down within the 40 years of, well, it was still in the wilderness. Right, which didn't survive, right? Well, that Torah was kept in the, uh, was, the Torah of Moshe was kept um, next to the Ark in the, uh, in the temple. I'm saying the Torah that you have in your hand today was written down around, what, a thousand years ago? Wait, hold, what do you mean the Torah? Because there's many Torahs around the world. So right? are they all different? Or are they, are no, they're all the same, they're all the but same. There's, lots of, there's lots of what we call Sifrei Torah, Torah scrolls around the world. Right. So my synagogue has about, has about 18 Torah scrolls. Okay, so let's say right? the, the, so the, the first Torah written down... The first down, Torah scroll written by Moses, yes. that was kept in the temple. Right, when, where is that? That was hidden. Okay, so we don't so, have that now. So we don't have it. We I'm don't have the, the original scroll. The, the Torah that you have in your hand today is not the same scroll that Moses wrote. Right. Fair enough. I understand. Fine. But I'm saying the, when you were in the wilderness, yes, and for over what a thousand, fifteen hundred years, there was no written Torah. It was it was forbidden to no, be written. No, no, no. The oral Torah was forbidden to be written. The written Torah had to be written. So what was the difference between the oral and the written Torah? The oral Torah is what God gave to be kept orally in order to explain the written Torah. The written Torah had to be written down and wasn't allowed to be changed even one letter. So you're saying that the... So Moses comes down with the Torah, alayhi salam, that was written down and you have that... and that was compiled at the time of Moses. Yeah, Moses... And that exists, that exists up till today. Not that exact scroll, but no, the same. Obviously, we're not saying the same that. text. What, you're saying the identical text. Yes. So, but from my understanding, the there are different Torahs in the world today, right? No, there aren't. The, so you have the Greek. What a Greek translation. A gr Greek translation. But do you have the original Hebrew? You're saying to me. Yes, we have the original Hebrew. The original Hebrew. Okay. So I think last time we discussed this with uh, with uh, we discussed we discussed this Jeremiah eight eight last time. I don't remember. Uh, with Hashim, do you remember with Hashim? I remember having a conversation with Hashim. I can't remember what we talked about. And I think the difference. Didn't we talk about regrets last time? Yeah, the the difference. Of, yeah, we talked about the rainbow as well, and uh, God. I don't remember the rainbow. God, uh, God making the rainbow to remind himself never to destroy, never to destroy all of humanity again. I don't and, remember that. Okay, we we had this discussion with you last. Oh, I did. I dare say it's starting to rain again. Well, my point to you, uh, I think, uh, uh, Josh, is that I think last time what we did establish is that the Torah as we have it today was written down a thousand, fifteen hundred years plus after Moses. Again. And it was the, the oral... No, oral no, that's not what we established. We established that the oldest scroll that exists today dates to 1,500 years after Moses. We don't, uh, we don't, nobody said, we, we didn't say that we established that the Torah was first written down so 1,500 so years I think, later. I, I think, that's not what happened. So let me see if I can find Hashim, because Hashim actually brought those verses up, which I don't actually have remember. Yeah, yeah. Because I think last time we brought those verses, the specific verses up, 
that indicates, and I think the verse that you've just, Jeremiah 8, 8, that you've read out today, today the readings that we have are, are very, very different, and they come from your sources as well, actually. But let me see if uh, Hashim is around. But to, in, in, in any case, Josh, right? At the end of the day, do, do what's the number of people that you, of, of witnesses to something that you would consider to be to, to be accurate because you, because a problem that you were talking about before was how do we know that it's been kept accurate, accurately and faithfully by the people that supposedly were transmitting it? Right? Yeah. What, what, at what number would you say that testimony becomes quite reliable? I think the testimony of people can be very small or very large. Yes, but what but number? No, no, I'm not saying there has to be a specific number. However, what you should be able to establish is a lineage yes. of, of lineage and also a mechanism yes. as to how that could be preserved, have, right? Now, if one is relying solely upon an oral tradition, then one has to establish an oral tradition which is unchallengeable. So, for example, if you came up to me today and you said, Hashim, do you remember last time we were speaking with Josh? And what's that? This. Yeah. Do you remember last time we were talking with... In this week, you remember, contains three do you remember, do you remember, independent do you remember last chains. Well, look, I'll go back with your chains. Three but independent I'll, transmissions I'll, I'll involve chains Hashim from Moses. Well. Look, what I'm trying to say to you is, there's two things that are involved here. Number one is establishing a chain. Yes. Number two is establishing a mechanism within that chain that ensures that something can be recorded and transmitted and preserved and passed on accurately. Yes. Now, one of the things that you'd have to do is you'd have to show me examples of potentially thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people who've completely memorized the Torah and can relay the Torah verbatim without addressing the book itself from first page up to the last page, because that then becomes a mechanism. As in through history or in our present day? I'm saying even till present day, it should be a continuation. Till present day. And why does it so, have to be? Why does it have to be hundreds of thousands of people who are able to tell you verbatim? Why? Because what that establishes is that that's a very firm stronghold in terms of establishing uh, an oral tradition yeah. that is impeccable, that has no what if flaws I can show or you problems. Hundreds? I would still be very impressed if you could show me hundreds of people who had me who have memorized the Torah from the first letter to the last letter and can relay it without looking into the book. Yeah. Now what we can do with Islam, with the Quran, is we can show you millions of people okay. who have memorized the Quran from the first letter to the last letter of the Quran and can relay it completely from memory. Millions. So what that established... not very long though. I agree. I agree. But, 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 I'm but there are hundreds. It's over 600, are... It's over 600 pages. Right? I, I think, uh, Hashim, we're talking about the preservation of the Torah. Yeah. Now, Jeremiah 8, 8, we brought up, I think, last time. What Josh is implying is that it's not talking about preservation of the Torah, but it's saying it's talking about... Sorry, what was your... It's stop is it stop rating? <laughs> what it's talking about there, what Jeremiah is, what Jeremiah is actually saying, and this is what the Mephoshim explained, is that... Is that it's all well and good, you guys saying, oh, well, nothing bad's going to happen to us, we've got the Torah with us. It's all well and good saying that, but if, you're, if you've got the Torah with us and you're, and, and, you're not, and you're not following it, and you're not doing what you're supposed to do, it then it's irrelevant. It mentions it mentions Not just following it. Yes. So it says it's from, I, I, You're writing it in vain, right? You're writing it in vain. It's a pen which is in vain. Sheker does not only mean false, it also means vain. No, no, it says the scribes have falsified it. Well, it says something in Hebrew. What does it say in Hebrew? Eight Shekhar Sofrim. Meaning? Right? La Shekhar Osa. It's done in vain. No, no. Shekhar. Why, why do the English trans translate it as falsified? Well, in some or the English false, translations. Or the false pens. In some, I can't answer for some English translations, like, like, like the King James. I don't know what's going on over there. Right? I don't know. Well, if you go to and you find the same translation number. I don't know what it says in Kabad. I know what it says in my current translation over here. What does it say? Is Kabad, is Kabad trustable in terms of its uh, translation? I is it done by rabbis? I or? don't know where they got their translation from. I've no idea. I don't know if they're using the Lubavitcher Rebbe's translation or they're just using the JPS or I don't know. 
No, but I'm just saying, generally speaking, it's, it's within, done by the Jews, right? within it's not, your community. It's not the Christians doing yeah. it. So you, you can't blame the Christians. Look, for that. I'm not. I'm not blaming. Right? I'm not. I'm. I'm not 